it gives a quite quite beautiful um, analogies or um, images of how we can in fact practice this loving kindness and how unshakable it can be and how profound it can be practiced and in another way this this uh, sutta is um, is quite profound and in a way that uh, the Buddha tells us the depth of how we should practice this uh, this practice of forgiveness and compassion even when we come upon hard times and in fact this is where we we get to see how much we've practiced and how much the our practice has uh, given us fruits in a way that we can see uh, the depth of of what we've practiced and so um, I, I often say, if, if you want to know how, how much you've practiced, go spend a few weeks with your family. You'll see quite soon. <laughs> and usually with our family, it's uh, one, of these, uh, one of these times where we have very deep conditionings, where we were very, very young, and the deepest rooted unconscious behavior in our psyche comes from uh, the family environment and it's very easy to see in these things that we really just answer to uh, our siblings or to our our family that because we've been so close to them for so long it's it just comes out and then you really get to see how sharp awareness is in fact and also to point out that when everything is easy it's easy when everything is easy everything goes along quite fine and it's when things get uh, a little tougher gets a little bit more rough on the edges where we really uh, get to see what's, what's inside, what's inside of us and what's inside of other people also. And so this is a wonderful sutta for, for this reflection. And this, this is at Sawati at Anathapindika's monastery, uh, like a lot of the suttas. And this Molya Paguna is a venerable monk who was associating a little too much with the bhikkhunis, <laughs> making friends a little too close friends. And um, whenever someone would say something uh, about uh, the bhikkhunis, he would get really angry and upset and he would start retaliating. And it was the same thing for him. Uh, when somebody would say something to him and that wasn't very pleasing, the, the nuns would uh, lose their temper also. And so um, this is not uh, usually first simply for monks to be uh, associating a lot with the nuns is quite rare. and. Uh, um, not, uh, not that it didn't happen at all, but um, we will see uh, in this sutta the, the Venerable Molya Paguna was a little bit um, difficult uh, to, to teach for the Buddha because he wasn't very listening, he wasn't, very, he wasn't paying attention very much. And the, the Buddha talks about it a little bit. And then somebody realizes that and goes to the Venerable Molya Paguna and says, uh, talks about it to the Buddha and then the Buddha says, please bring, bring the Venerable uh, Paguna 
to me. I want to talk to him. And so this is where it begins. And uh, the Buddha says, Is it true that you, Paguna, are spending a lot of time frequenting the nuns and all this situation is happening? You're becoming angry and all of this. He said, Yes, Bhante. Are you not a son of respected family, gone forth with determination, out of determination, from the home life into homelessness? Indeed, Bhante, it is not proper, Paguna, for a son of respected family, gone forth with determination, from the home life into homelessness, that you should spend so much time frequenting the nuns. Paguna, if anyone speaks impolitely to the nuns in front of you, you should abandon any urge or thoughts connected with the regular house life. You should train, my mind will be unshaken, and I will not retaliate with hurtful speech. I will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. This is how you should train. Paguna, if anyone were to come up and speak impolitely to you, then you should abandon any urge or thoughts connected with regular house life. Now, when he's speaking of regular house life, it simply means that um, he's a monk. <laughs> And monks take very strong determination not to become angry and to let go of these unwholesome states. In fact, this is the very foundation of what it means to become a monk, is to abandon these unwholesome states. Where, as in the house life, you can do whatever you want, that's fine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really... It's not recommended for sure, but you're your own master. You can do, you know, nobody's going to... You didn't take any kind of vows in particular that saying uh, that you have to be behave in a certain way or another. But when we become monks, then it's a whole lifestyle. And it's not proper for a monk to... And the Buddha is pointing it out here. It's not proper for a monk to become angry these kinds of things and in fact this is revealing his lack in the training where uh, it's starting to have uh, strong attachments and not seeing his own behavior not seeing his own hurt and the hurt that he's creating others because the Buddha said, Nahi virana virani samantida kudachanang avirana cha samanti etta uh, dhammo sanantano. Hatred by hatred is never appeased in this world. Only by non hatred it is appeased. And this is a law eternal. And uh, to retaliate with anger is simply lacking discernment, lacking wisdom to see that in fact it's not good for anybody. So when we receive anger to re react by anger is never it's never wholesome and it's never gonna help anybody and monks make a very strong determination not to behave like this. If anyone were to come up and speak impolitely to you, then you should abandon any urge or thoughts connected with regular life. Then you should train. My mind will be unshaken, and I will not retaliate with hurtful speech. I will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. This is how you should train. And this is pointing at the nature of wholesome states and the nature of unwholesome states. The nature of wholesome states like love,
compassion, patience, uh, joy. These states are imbued with awareness. They are present states of mind. Where we, when there is love, there is, of course, there is awareness. And that doesn't mean uh, uh, attached love or uh, conditioned love. This means true love, caring, true caring, genuine care, genuine attention. Because what does it mean to, to be compassionate or to love? It, it, it needs to be aware, otherwise it's, it doesn't have any meaning to it. And the nature of unwholesome states, like anger, is that these states are reactions. They are rooted in ignorance. We lose mindfulness and we slip into anger they are reactionary and so that is the the root of the buddha's teaching is to cultivate the wholesome states and abandon un unwholesome ones and like this we cultivate awareness paguna if anyone were to hit you with their hand hit you with stones hit you with sticks then you should abandon any urge and thoughts connected with the regular life. Then you should train. My mind will be unshaken, and I will not retaliate with hurtful speech. I will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. This is how you should train. And now we're starting to see the depth of the true Buddhist teaching. And how the Buddha really meant that anger is never going to help us. <laughs> and so, even when we come upon violence. Then the Blessed One said, Once the monks pleased my mind by their manners, when at a certain time I said, Monks, I eat food only once a day. By eating only one single meal per day, I know of no disease. I live at ease, free from sickness, with lightness and strength. In the same way, monks, eat only a single meal per day. Then also you will know of no disease. You will live at ease, free from sickness, with lightness and strength. And I did not have to repeatedly teach the monks. I only had to arouse awareness in them. Now he's speaking directly to Molia Paguna, the venerable one, that um, because uh, he was a little bit hard on the ear and hard to teach because he wasn't listening to the ac actual words of the Buddha. And that was a problem in the Sangha at that time when the Sangha became very popular people ordained for all kinds of different reasons which were not always very nice uh, for example at the time of the buddha simply to have food every day to have robes to wear was quite a luxury and the sangha of monks and the buddha was known to have these things quite easily because people had a lot of faith in them because they were practicing properly they were holding very good virtue, they were known to be honest. But some people ordain for the robes and some people for the food and the shelters. And, that, uh, and then these kinds of situations happened. Just as if there were on flat ground at a crossroad, a chariot tied to swift horses standing with gold ready. ready. Then a skilled driver, a charioteer, a trainer of horses would climb on. He would grab the reins in his left hand and grab the goad in his right hand, and he could drive wherever he wanted. In the same way, monks, I did not have to repeatedly teach the monks. I only have to spark their attention. Monks, abandon unwholesome states and be relentless in cultivating wholesome ones. This is how you will come upon growth, increase, and prosperity.
Now the Buddha makes it quite clear what his teaching is in this Dhamma and way of life. Monks, just as if close to a village or town, there was a great sal tree grove covered with castor bean plants. Then someone would come wanting wanting it to live, wanting it to thrive, wanting its liberation. That person would cut down the sultry saplings that were frail, crooked, and drawing vitality, and would bring them away, completely clearing the inner grove. Now the inner grove is inside. And that person would carefully tend to the young saplings, which were strong and upright. These are the wholesome states. Then the salt tree grove would quickly come to growth, increase, and prosperity. This beautiful simile. In the same way, monks, abandon unwholesome states and be relentless in cultivating wholesome ones. This is how you will come upon growth, increase, and prosperity in this Dhamma and way of life. In the past, monks, in this very same Sawati, there was an influential countess named Widahika. The Countess Widahika, uh, the Countess Widahika's beautiful renown was such. The Countess Widahika is pious. The Countess Widahika is humble. The Countess Widahika is serene. Now Countess Widahika had a servant named Kali who was skilled, steadfast, and well organized in her work. And one day the servant Kali thought, the be this beautiful renown of my noble lady is such that she is pious, humble, and serene. But how is it in reality? Is my noble lady really peaceful, though she harbors anger within and it is simply not showing? Is it only because my work is well organized that my noble lady is peaceful though she harbors anger within and it is simply not showing? What if I tested my lady? Then the servant Kali decided to get up after sunrise. The Countess Vidihika said to Kali, Hey Kali, yes noble lady, why do you wake up past sunrise? For nothing, lady. You wake up past sunrise for nothing, you say, huh? You useless slave. She shouted angry and enraged. Then the servant Kali thought, Surely there is anger within my noble lady, and it is simply not showing. But because my work is well organized, my lady looks peaceful though she harbors anger within, and it is simply not showing. What if I were to test my lady a little further? Then the servant Kali got up later in the day. <laughs> Countess Vidihika said to Kali, Hey Kali, yes noble lady, why do you get up still later in the day? For nothing noble lady. You wake up even later in the day for nothing, you say, huh? You use the slave. She shouted angry and enraged and she launched into spiteful speech. Then the servant Kali thought, surely there is anger within my noble lady and it is simply not showing. It is not absent in her. But it is because my work is well organized that my lady shows looks peaceful, though she harbors anger within, and it is simply not showing. What if I were to test my noble lady a little further? Then the servant Kali got up even later in the day. Countess Widahika said to Kali, Hey Kali, yes noble lady, why do you get up still later in the day? For nothing, noble lady. You wake up still later in the day for nothing, you say, huh, you useless slave. She shouted angry and enraged and she grabbed a long bolt and she gave her a blow to the head and cut her head open. Shocked, 
with the, with the cut on her head bleeding profusely. Kali went up to the neighbors and said, Look at the pious lady's work. Look at the humble lady's work. Look at the serene lady's work. In what name can she become angry and enraged at her only servant for waking up late? To then grab a long bolt and give her a blow to the head and cut her head open. Then, not long after, a terrible report about Countess Vedihika spread thus. Countess Vedihika is violent. Countess Vedihika is fierce. Countess Vedihika is unstoppable. And this is a wonderful story that tells a long ways about uh, how it works for us and for everyone. And that it is only when we encounter difficult situation um, that things become really apparent. And that... Um, Sometimes it's, uh, it's easy, when things are easy, it's easy to hide things that are inside. But uh, when we come upon certain situations, then it comes out. And these are teachers, in fact. This is, these are our best teachers to show us what, what, is, what is the work to be done. Similarly, monks, should there be a monk here who looks kinder than kindness, more gentle than gentleness, calmer than calmness. He may well be so, as long as he does not come upon unpleasant speech. But it is when that monk comes upon unpleasant speech that it can be known if he is truly kind, truly gentle, and truly calm. I call not a monk respectful, he who is respectful only for the sake of robes, food, shelter, and medicine, and who pretends to be respectful. Because that monk, when he does not get robes, food, shelter, and medicine, is not respectful, and he stops pretending to be respectful. And we're talking about monks here, but this is this is a universal law. <laughs> this is not only limited to monastic life, unfortunately. Or, I don't know, fortunately. But a monk who is respectful because he esteems the Dhamma, respects the Dhamma, thinks highly of the Dhamma, reveres the Dhamma, praises the Dhamma, and here the Dhamma is goodness, it is virtue, righteousness. That monk behaves respectfully. Him I call him respectful. Therefore, monks, thinking we will be respectful because we esteem, respect, think highly and revere and praise the Dhamma, we will behave respectfully. This is how you should train monks. Monks, there are these five possible manners of speech that others could say to you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, true or false, soft or harsh, bent on goodness or bent on harm, with a mind of loving kindness or inner hate. Whichever of these manners they use to address you, you should train in this way. Our minds will be unshaken and we will not retaliate with a hurtful speech. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. We will dwell suffusing that person with a heart filled with love. And with, that, and with this as a, as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart filled with love vast, expanded, boundless, without anger or resentment. This is how you should train. Just as if a person would arrive with a shovel and a basket, 
he would say, I shall take away the earth from this great big earth. He would dig some soil here and there. He would scatter some soil here and there. He would spit here and there, and he would urinate here and there, saying, Be without earth, be without earth. What do you think, monks? Could that person take away the earth from this great big earth? No, Bhante. Why? Because, Bhante, this great big earth is deep and immeasurable. It is not possible to take away its earth. That person could only reap misery and disappointment. Similarly, these are the five possible manners of speech that others could say to you. Whatever manners of speech that they use, you should train. Our minds will be unshaken and we shall not retaliate with hurtful words. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. We will dwell suffusing that person with a heart filled with love. And with this as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart like the earth, vast, expanded, boundless, without anger nor resentment. This is how you should train. Just as if a person were to come with yellow, blue and red paint and would say, I will paint shapes in the air, I shall make forms appear in nothing. What do you think, monks? Could that person paint shapes in the air and make forms appear? No, Bhante. Why? Because, Bhante, space is without form, without attribute. It is not possible nor easy to paint shapes on it and make, make forms appear. That person can only reap misery and disappointment. Similarly, monks, there are these five manners of speech that others may use to address you. In whatever case, you should train thus. Our minds will be unshaken, and we will not retaliate with hurtful words. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. We will dwell suffusing that person with a heart full of love. And with this as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart like space, vast, expanded, boundless, without anger nor resentment. This is how you should train. Just as if a person were to come with a blazing grass torch and would say, with my blazing grass torch, I shall burn away and dry up the river Ganges. What do you think, monks? Could that person burn away and dry up the river Ganges with a blazing grass torch? No, Bhante. Why? Because the river Ganges is deep and immeasurable. It is not easy to burn it away or to dry it with a blazing grass torch. That person could only reap misery and disappointment. Similarly, monks, there are these five possible manners of speech that other may use to address you. In whichever manner they may use it, you should train. Our minds will be unshaken and we will not retaliate with hurtful words. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger, we will dwell suffusing that person with a heart filled with love. And with this as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart like the river Ganges. Vast, expanded, boundless, without anger or resentment. This is how you should train. Wonderful similes. Just as if there was a skin bag which was 
polished, smoothly polished, thoroughly smoothly polished, which was soft and silky, oiled and not dry. And a person came with a stick and a pebble and would say, I shall make this skin bag rustle and crackle. What do you think, monks? Could that person make this thoroughly, smoothly polished skin bag, which is soft and silky, oiled and not dry, rustle and crackle with a stick and a pebble? No, Bhante. Why? Because that skin bag is polished, smoothly polished, thoroughly smoothly polished, soft and silky, oiled and not dry. It is not possible to make it rustle and crackle with a stick and a pebble. That person could only reap misery and disappointment. So it is, monk. And similarly, there are these five possible manners of speech that others, ca that others could say to you. And whatever, whatever courses of speech they could say to you, you should train in this way. Our minds will be unshaken and we will not retaliate with hurtful words. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. We will dwell suffusing that person with a heart filled with love. And with this as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart like a skin bag, vast, expanded, boundless, without anger and resentment. This is how you should train monks. A little bit of an odd simile for the skin bag, but this is 2,600 years ago, so it's fairly understandable, I guess. <laughs> now the simile of the saw. Monks, even if brigands or spies were to come and sever you limb after limb with a two-handed saw, at that time, one who would harbor a hateful mind would not be practicing my teaching. At that time, you should train in this way. Our minds will be unshaken and we will not retaliate with hurtful words. We will dwell with a heart full of love, caring for their well-being, not obsessed by anger. We will dwell suffusing that person with a heart filled with love. And with this as a support, we will dwell suffusing the all-encompassing universe with a heart filled with love vast, expanded, boundless, without anger nor resentment. This is how you should train. Monks, you should frequ frequently call to mind this analogy of the saw. Seeing in such a way, monks, could there be any manner of speech, subtle or rough, that you could not endure? No, Bhante. Then frequently call to mind this analogy of the saw. This will be for your welfare and happiness for a very long time. This is what the awakened one said. The monks were uplifted by the awakened one's word. And this is where the Buddha makes it fairly clear how we are supposed to practice <laughs> and to what extent and of course it's a bit of a rough <laughs> simile but it also really makes it clear and reveals to us how much he meant that anger will never serve us for anything, for any purpose. And that love, responding with compassion and love and forgiveness and patience, 
really is practicing the Buddha's teaching. And so using this uh, wonderful sutta that has all these great ways of explaining how we should practice, like the earth, like the river Ganges, like space, like the skin bag. Well, I invite you to take a comfortable position. And close your eyes and let go of any tension that's in your body and in your mind. And relax and smile. And bring up this feeling of love inside your heart. This warm, glowing, radiant feeling. suffusing your whole body and extending throughout the whole universe to all directions. If there are, if there is any of those similes that really resonated with you, you can use them as a template for your meditation. whether it is the vastness of the earth the emptiness of all of space throughout the universe the depth of the river Ganges knowing that anything that happened to you in the past or will happen to you in the future all of it is only like little diggings of a shovel or little blazing grass torches. They don't actually mean much compared to the depth of the feeling of love that we can cultivate.
The truth is that everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be able to love and feel love. And especially those who become angry, who retaliate, who find faults with you. These people are the first ones to whom you should feel compassion for. If any distraction arises, simply continue practicing using the four steps of wise practice, right effort, noticing the distraction, letting it go, relaxing the tension that comes with it. And simply coming back to the feeling of love, boundless. And maintaining that feeling. These are the four steps. And repeating these over and over. every time the mind is distracted. Away from the love.
Sabhe satha, sabhe panna, sabhe bhuta, sabhe pugala. Sabhe atha bhava pariya panna. Sabhe tiyo sabhe purisa. Sabhe ariya sabhe anariya. Sabhe deva sabhe manusa sabhe vini patika. Awera untu abhyaphe jauntu. Aniga huntu sukhyatha nang pariyarantu. Dukkhamuchantu yathalada sampatitta maviga chantu kamasaka. Purati maya disaya pechi maya disaya. Uttaraya disaya dakhinaya disaya. Purati maya nu disaya pechi maya nu disaya. Uttaraya nu disaya dakhinaya nu disaya. Sabhe satha sabhe panna sabhe bhutta sabhe pugala. Sabhe atha bhava pariya panna. Sabhe tiyo sabhe purisa. Sabhe ariya sabhe anariya. Sabhe deva sabhe manusa sabhe vinipatika. Awe rauntu abhyaphe jantu. Aniga huntu sukhyatha nang pariyarantu. Dukkha muchantu yathalada sampatitto mawi gachantu kamasaka. Imaya dhamma nu dhamma patipatthiya buddhang pujami. Imaya dhamma nu dhamma patipatthiya dhammang pujami. Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya sanghang pujami. Adha imaya pati padaya jati jara bhyadi maranangha parimuchi sami. Idang te punyang asawaka yang wahang hotu. Idang me punyang nibbana sa pachayo tu. Mama punya bagang sabasatanang bajimi. Te sabbe me samang punya baga.